All right. Uh, we are out here at uh, a new area that we have been working on. This used to be, used to be, a birch biome, birch forest, and I leveled it. You should have seen it before. It was all hills and everything. You can kind of get an idea up there where I chopped all that down and put my castle up there. Um, spawn is over in that direction, directly behind that hill. And I temporarily set up these chests here and just chop this entire forest down. Um, this is what we lovingly call the football field. And we are converting it into a tree farm. And we have come up with a pattern that is very efficient for just about any type of single tree that you want to put down. Basically, it consists of uh, five blocks in between two rows. Uh, every In between there, you have one that is three blocks apart. So spacing this way is three blocks, then have this diamond pattern around where you would plant the tree. So with that spacing in mind, uh, you always get uh, you know maximum leaf drops and you also which means you're going to get a good sapling return on each tree. Um, it's also just far enough apart so that you'll get pretty much uh, no inhibited growth. See there's uh, and, and actually on birch this is ideal because there's a, a whole space between where the leaves are. On the acacias, they kind of mingle together, but they've got those big mushroomy like uh, leaf patterns. But it's far enough apart that you're going to get plenty of drops. I see plenty of saplings up there milling around already. And uh, yeah, we're going to get plenty out of this. Um, anyway, uh, we more to follow later because I'm gonna there's enough changing in this world that I need to do start a world tour and uh, kinda start that to happening um, <clears throat> but that's just an update we're having fun out here at Derpacraft we'll see you later bye It's just so deep. <laughs> I think it's about 14 blocks deep right here. Maybe maybe 15. Um, I'll count them on the next pass. Whoa. Okay. So we got 16 blocks left. Yep, that's uh, well, it's uh, 15 deep. Wow, got a little deeper. Started off down there, and it was 12. Um, yeah, I think it's time for a little break here, <laughs> and I'll show you around and show you what's been going on here at this end of the uh, the world. I am, uh, there we go, I am making a mob spawner, and this thing is going to be ginormous. Um, it is going to be quite the achievement when I finish it. <laughs> it is out here in my tree farm area which all of this is reclaimed terraforming. Um, a lot of this was over top of ocean and other areas of my world. Um, this used to be a birch forest and I, as you can see, have happily converted the birch forest into a tree forest, a uh, tree farm, so to speak. All of these are about five squares apart, each one of them relatively speaking and five squares is enough for a gap in between here and it's just enough to make these trees grow perfectly um, 
Got pumpkins in between, spaced evenly. Got these half slabs down to show you where they went so you won't get confused when it comes time to replant. Um, <clears throat> this is enough to get more than enough drops from the leaves because the leaves are optimally spaced so they grow in perfectly. And this configuration works for any tree, any single sapling tree growth. Um, works really well for these guys. Well, works all right for oak. We had to put a cap on the oak. Otherwise we get those giant squirrely trees and we don't want that. <clears throat> so the oak trees are a little bit short, but that's the best we can do with oak. I wanted to have oak around just because, well, it's oak. Don't know where he's off to. Mm -hmm. So the acacia are the hardest because they grow irregular and they provide spawn points. Um, so you got to light those up before you harvest. Uh, and they're really hard to harvest because they go off in all kinds of different directions, but they do they do create their own roofed forest when that's finished. Um, out here, I have spaced out pumpkins to provide a grid-like area so that you could put the four four up saplings like dark oak and you can even do the uh, spruce giant tree. That's the best way to get spruce, by the way, is the giant spruce. Um, I only use that for saplings and leaf, leaves. Um, <clears throat> this right here, uh, you know, you can do your jungle trees, your dark oak, your spruce, all of that out here. Um, just do a big line and chop it all down. Wood for days, wood for days. And uh, this right here is my maze. I have built a maze. And we have a beacon in the middle. Shucks. And it looks pretty cool. It's just something fun I did. And uh, over here is, uh, over there is my portal back to spawn, which is only, in terms of spawning, it's only like three meters away. <laughs> Um, wouldn't believe how close it is in the nether. Let's just go and I'll show you. <clears throat> okay, made this little hallway. And this hallway is not that long. It just goes right around here and boom, where it spawned. Um, this is the spawn portal. Now I'll show you just how close we are. It's not too far at all. Um, there is the spawn uh, villager village, trading village. And just past that is um, that little place, I guess. Oh man, I lost my jump bonus. Uh, I have to do it this way. Turn it. Oh. oh, just get me through. Okay, and just past this is where. Really? I can't run? guess I'm getting more lag than I thought. Um, <clears throat> is this pig? And this pig is, well, that's where my new base is. My new castle. Um, this is Jacob's little construction. Uh, he was making a base and uh, this basically is a drop tube down to the bottom. Uh, where he was going to, I guess, do a strip mine. And he never did anything with it. He just, he, he, he chiseled his way into a uh, giant ravine, um, capped off a bunch of lava, and I don't know, got frustrated. So 
I, I created all of this while he was standing still. <laughs> um, I had to make a pumpkin farm, or actually, Osrith Clay made this pumpkin farm so that I could uh, light this place up. We had a ton of pumpkins. This is, this is I dare say not that uh, we've got about six stacks of pumpkins in this entire place. Uh, I, I had all my chests just kind of lined up here. I had about four chests, and I got to the point where I was just like crazy, you know? I, I got to make this a little more formal, and so I built this little kind of hut, and it's it's extremely useful. Uh, looks good, and, you know, put together, you know, barn-like look to it. Got a little loft up there. Um, <clears throat> I need to put a bed up there because I, I need to get to sleep sometimes. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm working on what this is going to turn out to be a mob spawner. And I'm going to use a variation of a mumbo jumbo design. Uh, there's a new guy, uh, the Smoking Koala. Uh, he's not new, but um, he did a variation of the mumbo jumbo design and updated it, and it is a pretty good design mechanically. So I'm going to use aspects of that design and work them into. You know, I, sometimes I just don't understand how things happen work them into this design and see just how efficient it really will become. Anyway, I'll update you more as that progresses. <laughs> Back to the grind. Wow. This uh, little progress update here. <laughs> Anybody says I don't do epic builds, uh, yeah, right. Um, let's just look at this. Uh, the cobble comes down to where the ocean floor was, right? And um, right there where that gravel is, it kind of dips in. And the ocean floor was really regular down here. And I, I just basically brought it down to level 20. There's 20 blocks up. This is 20 blocks deep exactly. And I'm removing the sand as I fill in some of these irregular areas that the sand didn't get. Um, yeah, my goodness. Um, yeah, I, uh, this project is huge. Uh, not in terms of the size, really. It is going to be big, but in terms of a mob spawner, yes. But I believe that this mob spawner will take advantage of the fullest amount that mobs can be generated for a player within the spawnable zone. So, uh, in other words, um, the length of this is optimal for the the size of this tree farm over here. Um, as a player moves from one side of this to the other side, chopping down trees as they go, that thing will be working and running. Uh, it's passive. Uh, basically just all the mobs just generated at you know random intervals. So as I move further this way, um, that thing will become optimally in the sweep spot. So the, the, the mobs will just keep falling and falling and falling. Um, it's, it's going to be very, very productive. Um, I'm, I have no doubt. So uh, it may actually, there we go, may actually become a lag generator for this area. But um, uh, there are going to be uh, some 
some issues that I have to address down there with the drop zone because all of this is going to be drop zone into a too wide area which will have hoppers that run the length of this this channel right here um, and they're going to it's just going to be a you know pick up the pick up the spawn you know drop them down to their death type deal they'll be washed off of here with water um, which will be on a timer I'm gonna put packed ice over that so hopefully that will start them moving faster it actually doesn't move them faster on the ice as water flows but it will get them to moving faster I'm hoping anyway zoom avoid I hope I'm pronouncing his name right uh, did a test on this and proved that uh, there is no acceleration difference between mobs on ice and mobs on dirt or stone but um, I'm hoping that when the water hits them they start moving faster in other words they will not go against the water as fast but the real genius of this design is going to be that it's going to be multiple levels high it will be uh, many many levels high and I'm not going to flush but one level at a time so the level will totally flush for a certain period of time extended past what normally it would and then it's going to go up to the next level and then this one will start spawning again so it will never stop dropping uh, it'll get everything that's on the level even if it's fighting it'll eventually give up and go over and then it'll go to the next level and do the same thing so these mobs will be washed away to a single drop point and they will fall to their death and everything will be hunky-dory um, it's just basically I want the drops off of these guys um, this pit uh, we'll have a collection point um, where I will basically probably connect it to my spider spawner over there. Um, let's go see that because that's a good thing to, to go talk about right now. And because I don't think you guys have actually seen it yet. Um, Osiris Clay and I spotted this spawner while we were caving and took it over uh, and had a lot of fun with it um, and I dressed it up he did the lava blades and basic construction on it but I I made I purtified it I purtified it we recently lit up this cavern which is pretty epic to drop in on by the way and that was neat but uh, this is the spider spawner area that I dressed out. I've got all sorts of workbench stuff in here so we can dilly dally. Um, if you can read this, then spiders will fall. That's right. Um, and there they come. They're coming down. They're getting chewed up by the lava blade. Essentially, we had a need for string. We really don't care about the experience. We've got plenty of that with our ender farm. Uh, right now, this is purely just a a build for, you know, getting spiders. And all this is half slabs around here, so I'm totally safe back in here. But uh, you can see the, the spawner right there, and they're dropping. Now, the problem with being back here is, as you can see, they will fight against the water. Um, they, they are tracking me. So they will fight against the water forever so basically you know every now and then I just go around there because you know I'm, I'm just <laughs> and then they just basically go in here they get chewed up by the lava blade and they drop string now there is a lot of string that gets away because um, it gets burned up but this is sort of a passive thing so uh, <coughs> It does produce enough string for making our uh, whatever we need. Um, 
So there is a lot of string in there that really, uh, you know, if you go AFK here for like say 20 minutes, you're going to get about three stacks of string, which is really about all you need uh, for whatever project. Um, but anyway, that's that's the spider spawner. Um, go back up. Oh, come on. There we go. Having some lag issues here. But uh, yeah, I just, I love this giant. Ooh, we got some areas we need to light up yet. Ah, hmm. Anyway, that's, that's way down there. Uh, we wanted to drop them but we couldn't do that because it was too low in the world and that being that's one of the only spider spawners we found uh, we needed to take advantage of it so um, didn't have too many options there yeah anyway um, that's an update more to come ah okay we are back and I am still working on the mob spawner from hell. Oh my goodness. This thing is a monster. I totally underestimated how big it was. Um, I've encountered a few problems with the build. Um, number one, uh, I totally underestimated the resources I would need. Um, you see all those hoppers down there? Oh boy. Um, I, I don't have enough iron for the ones on that side yet. Um, not because I don't have the iron, but because the iron is not here. <laughs> uh, all I have to do really is uh, follow that bridge and I get to an iron foundry by Tango Tech, and let me tell you, my hat's off to him because this wouldn't be possible without that thing. Um, yeah, uh, the redstone involved is really the big, you know, that's the jaw dropper here. Um, the redstone, uh, I'm actually short on quartz. So, um,. I was unaware, I not thinking, I just didn't realize that you couldn't break quartz blocks back into pieces of quartz. So I am quartz poor, but I am, decoratively speaking, I am quartz rich. <laughs> I have got more quartz than I will ever use. Uh, yeah, hard lesson learned there. Um, there is uh, a lot of um, a lot more pistons involved in this build than I first thought. Um, I was going to have one big water stream going across, but that's not going to work because I just don't want to spend that kind of redstone on this project. Um, the comparators would just kill me. Um, there's a comparator for every piston and basically the the signal runs this way and also if I were to power all these uh, I would have to do some creative redstone updating um, you know to get the line to go this long I would actually have to you know run a line out and this this build would go another block out this way and uh, that would just carry this all way you know we're talking three blocks as opposed to two blocks and when each one of these rows in the length of this thing is 48 blocks long uh, that adds up that's a stack of cobblestone for every row practically well three-fourths of a stack anyway um, it's 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 a lot of cobble um, there is way more cobble in this thing than I first thought. Um, every level, I think, has about four stacks of cobble in it. Um, 
just just on the platform, not including what's up there on the on the uh, the piston assembly and the water. Uh, that that there's probably another stack and a half there, um, easily. And then there's the wall that goes around all this. Uh, that's another big chunk of it. Um, smooth stone, I'm in short supply of now. I have to get the smelter back at spawn going. But um, let me just uh, jump down here real quick. And, ooh, better pick that up. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been staging all my supplies here, but I probably need to move it up there. Um, there's, I re just refreshed and I'm about to finish this thing off. Now you can see there's, there's a little bit of creative work on the outside of this thing, but, uh, I haven't even started skinning it yet. Uh, I wanted to hold off on that because, uh, I want to be able to jump down. <laughs> uh, but this, this will all be a, a skin and it'll kind of match up with my whole castle theme that I got going and I'm gonna turn this this little thing right here where the timers for each level will go um, actually there's gonna be three timers or two two timers yeah one timer for uh, no no okay there's gonna be a timer for setting the level that's going to produce water. That is a timer unto itself. So there's two timers. Each level will have a timer for its own shutoff. The shutoffs will basically send a signal back to the controller for the switch for the levels. All right. Um, I'm, I can tell this is getting confusing for my viewers. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get actually go over here to where we were working, me and Osrith Clay, um, on the design of this. Now, this right here is what he came up with. He showed me this, and even though uh, right now I have three levels, so this is perfect. Um, but this will not work past about four or five. You could extend this, but each time you do, um, but let, let me just show you what it does first. Uh, you push the button, and that one's lit. Now, the item is in here. Right now I only have one item, but I could put an item in every one of these and it would move them uh, sequentially. So push it again, it fires off, sends a signal, and moves the block, and now it shows up here. Did you see that? It was kind of took a while for it to get back down to here. So the longer out you go in this direction, the longer it takes the hoppers to send it back here and fire off the signal when the comparator senses it. So, um, this one, boom, goes without a hitch because it's just moving it. Boom, without a hitch, boom. All right, now this one, boom, 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 good dink. There you go. It takes a while to send it back. So, uh, you don't need to use, you don't want to use this in time sensitive operations, but it is a very reliable timer and uh, it's kind of hard to break this one. Um, so I'm going to be using this to control the signal that goes to another hopper timer. So it'll just be a, a simple hopper timer right over here connected to this signal, which will fire off the pistons. Now here is a mock-up of the piston assembly we originally thought we were going to use. Now this doesn't work. I'm not going to fire it off. It'll mess up all the redstone. But uh, this is basically how we thought we were going to do it. Water behind every piston. 
uh, fires off, uh, repeaters everywhere, but there's no way to update this line. Uh, so we would have to extend this out another block and put a repeater in the line here and then push this down to every other piston. Um, and that would that would basically power every every piston. Um, but that that ended up being a complicated build. So um, I split up the pistons and I'm able to update the line in between and also you know infinitely go without worry for you know what's going. Consequently what that meant is in front of the water as it comes out I put a block and the block spreads it to this block and this block which spreads it out in between the two so I can go every two instead of every one and still get the same results. As a matter of fact in front of the block I get a bonus but uh, that just means that my design isn't exactly clean. It's got a ragged edge at the end. So let's go back and look at that. Um, you see here, it's got a sawtooth. That's from the block which the water is resting on. Behind, well, I don't want to do that with a efficiency. Behind this block is the water source. And it flows over this block, flows onto this block, this block, and this block, and provides water all the way out there. Now, this is eight blocks to this point right here. I'm just got that so I can jump across off the ladder. Um, this right here uh, is a very good way of spreading your water out if you want to extend, you know, your pistons. Uh, gives you about the same results. You do have to do this sawtooth, and um, I am kind of worried about spiders crawling down the wall, but uh, not really, not really caring. Um, I think I'm gonna put a golem or two down there and just let them kill anything that doesn't, you know, die. But this is, I think, this is more than a a 32 block drop. Uh, I think it's about, actually I think it's about a 30 block drop. Now I gotta be careful because there may be some mobs down here. I did not light this up. So, actually I did, but water washed it away. Okay, there's there's my chest right there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and light this so we don't have any problems. And get this done real quick. Whoops. Okay, that looks good. Fair enough. Now, um, eventually I'll be filling that row in. Um, but for right now, I haven't. Um, I ran out of wood, so I didn't have any... Uh, uh, way to make trap chests. So I've got the trap chests now. They're not on me, they're upstairs. Um, but essentially each row I'm gonna put a chest so that uh, these rows uh, really really run quickly. So I'll just pop that last one out. When I get a trap chest here I will put it into that one. Um, then I'm gonna have a cascade of chests uh, that just kind of comes out this way, real elegant looking. I'm, I'm going to go for visual effect here. And uh, then I'm going to purtify all this. Purtify, purtify. <laughs> and my southern accent coming out there. So uh, we're going we're gonna to really uh, work on this castle theme. And I'm going to try to get some castle theme going on here. Um, and yeah, this, this is actually, <laughs> this was amazing. Uh, I, I could not believe how, how deep this ocean was to begin with. And then, um, just how, how enormous this build became. 
but I'm really liking the way it, it did turn out. Uh, uh, I, I don't mind the broken walls because, oh my goodness, that is so much work. Uh, <clears throat> now, as I finish this, I'll, I'll, I'll show you what it does. Um, so, tune in for the next, uh, I'll be, I'll be right back and I will have finished this thing. <laughs> 